so up until now in our channel we have looked only at deterministic systems right like uh, we tried to model an ideal batch reactor ideal pfr however we have never looked at uh, stochastic systems where there are high uncertainties and for many real world applications uh, a popular method are the monte carlo methods and uh, today we'll be looking at how to uh, do kinetic monte carlo so we'll be using something known as the gillespie's algorithm so this is the first of a two part video in the first uh, video which is this one we will be looking at the theoretical basis of why and how uh, we reach the gillespie's algorithm and in the second video we'll uh, try uh, looking at a case study and try simulating it on matlab right so in this video uh, i have kept several uh, time stamps so in case you feel bored or you want to skip to some part which you want to see in particular you can directly skip to that section so without further ado let's begin so in probability theory gillespie's algorithm generates statistically correct trajectories which is one of the possible solutions of the stochastic system that we are trying to study right and uh, this particular algorithm was made popular in 1977 by gillespie himself and uh, he was able to simulate chemical and biomolecular uh, reaction in a rather computationally effic efficient manner so yeah let's consider a system composed of a uh, two gas phase molecular species s1 and s2 and this this particular reaction takes place in uh, a large volume right and uh, we'll be using the same example throughout this video so uh, in case you see s1 and s2 anywhere please note that we are speaking about uh, molecular species s1 and s2 right so imagine that reaction takes place and given you know some details like rate constant and uh, reaction mechanism you can get a deterministic ode right and numerically integrate it and uh, solve it and so far in on our channel we have been doing that right like uh, we have been trying to simulate an ideal batch reactor ideal pfr etc so however uh, when we look at a small region see this white box here and when we zoom into a really small region we can see that uh, the mechanism of reactions are such that uh, you know molecules collide and uh, form new species right and uh, this collision uh, takes place uh, rather this reaction uh, generates new species such that they collide and uh, they instantaneously form uh, products upon collision and for simplicity let's consider molecule s1 and s2 consists of hard spheres right of uh, radii r1 and r2 respectively so from collision theory we know that the relative volume swept by s1 uh, is equal to this particular e equation right uh, pi r12 square u12 average and uh, into del t and uh, the volume swept uh, is in the small uh, time interval delta t right and uh, this u is uh, average relative speed uh, which can be obtained from maxwell uh, velocity distribution i think the average speed is 8 k t by pi mu as far as i remember uh, need to check that right and uh, we know the volume swept is this thing right and let's call this equations 1 and uh, note that i will be writing down equations like this and i'll be referring to them later on right so note these equations down so uh, right so uh, when we divide both sides by v right in equation 1 when we divide both sides by v we get the average probability that uh, a particular s1 and s2 pair will collide in uh, the small time interval delta t right uh, logically and uh, let x1 and x x2 be the number of s1 and s2 species respectively 
so x1 can be 100 molecules x2 can be 200 molecules whatever right and we multi when we multiply x1 and x2 into this particular probability i missed a v in the denominator right we get the probability that uh, one like species one and two co will collide inside the volume v in the next small interval dt now uh, note that the difference between these two is that uh, over here we are talking about a particular molecular s1 and s2 pair whereas here we are like speaking uh, you know generally like there are 100 molecules of s1 and 200 molecules of s2 and how what's the probability that uh, you know any of these uh, combinations collide so although we cannot calculate the number of collisions occurring in uh, v right for any infinitesimally small interval we can calculate the probability as we can see evidently in equation 3 and uh, so uh, we try to look at this particular system in terms of a newer perspective right we try to characterize it uh, in terms of collision probability per unit time instead of collision rate and uh, these collisions consti constitute of uh, a stoch stochastic markov process instead of a deterministic rate uh, process right and uh, what is markov process you may ask so markov process is any system of which if you know what the system is in the present you don't need to know uh, what the system was in the past okay so if you know the state of the system in the current time instance right you know everything about the system yeah it doesn't matter what uh, uh, what condition it was in in say 10 minutes ago or uh, 10 seconds ago all you need to know is the current uh, state of the system so uh, right so we have uh, if we look at the previous equation right uh, if we look at uh, this equation right equation number one or two we can see that all these for a particular time instance are uh, constant right so we can collectively write them as uh, c1 right and c1 dt is again the same thing right the average probability that a particular one two molecular pair will react according to r1 where r1 is some reaction occurring r1 uh, in our case is s1 plus s2 gives 2s1 right yeah so right so um, this particular reaction occurs right and given x1 number of s1 and x2 number of s2 all we need to do is multiply x1 and x2 with c1 and we will get the probability that r1 will occur inside v in infinitesimally small uh, time interval which is between t and t plus dt right and we can see equation number four is the same as uh, equation number two right and equation number five is the same as equation number three and uh, for any reaction r mu right r mu can be r1 r mu can be r2 r3 so on depending on uh, how many reactions uh, your uh, system consists of we can have uh, this particular equation 5a which is uh, c mu dt is defined as the average probability that uh, the reaction r mu has its reactant molecules to react accordingly in the next infinitesimally small uh, time interval right and uh, equation 5a can be regarded as the definition of stochastic rate constant c mu right and uh, it is also the fundamental hypothesis of the stochastic formulation of chemi chemical kinetics all right okay so now let's take a look at the relation between our uh, 
you know stochastic reaction constant c mu and uh, the deterministic rate constant that we have been looking at so far so uh, we had the reaction uh, and uh, we let's separate them in terms of uh, irreversible reactions right let's call the same reaction and split it up into r1 and r2 so um, we can write it in the following manner and uh, let's uh, take a look at r1 so uh, when we look at the deterministic formulation we are looking at the whole picture right so when we look at the whole picture we can see that k1 into the average product of x1 and x2 assuming that this particular reaction is uh, taking place right into dt is equal to v which is the volume the small volume which we are looking at right and uh, into the expectations that uh, the reaction r1 occurs now uh, why are we multiplying this with v well uh, you can take a look at equation number two or equation number three we can see v in the denominator right so uh, when we multiply v uh, we will get the you know the rate at which the reaction occurs and uh, you know the expectations can be uh, written in this form and uh, finally this is equal to the average of the probability that uh, the reaction will take place right so we can write the same thing as k1 into average of x1 into average of x2 into dt which will be equal to v into the average of x1 x2 c1 into dt now uh, continuing with the same reaction uh, to the extent that the deterministic uh, formulation is adequate this particular thing is equal right and we can cancel these two and we can see that uh, our uh, deterministic uh, rate constant uh, is equal to v times the stochastic rate constant but when we look at the reverse reaction right uh, the same thing is not the case and uh, like from uh, this particular uh, equation right we can again write the same thing for uh, reaction r2 right so k2 into the molecules that are taking part as reactants is equal to v times c2 into now here is the difference and this is why we chose this particular example we had to you know see what happens when uh, the same two molecules are colliding right so we have x1 into x1 minus 1 by 2 so why are we doing this well obviously we can't have a molecule of x1 you know colliding with itself so say there are uh, 100 molecules of x1 right uh, 100 can uh, collide with the other 99 but not itself and we are dividing it with two factorial to see the number of distinct collisions so that's why we have this particular uh, equation and finally we get uh, k2 equals v c2 by 2 so uh, in the end of the day we want to conduct some form of simulation right so say we want to observe these particular reactions in a large time scale right so we want to see uh, we i mean two questions come to mind uh, when we try simulating this particular system is that uh, when will the reaction occur or not occur and the second is which reaction will occur will reaction r1 occur or reaction r2 occur so okay let's let's look at this particular uh, time scale that we are trying to observe right so okay so um okay say at time t equal to zero we start observing and until a time tau no reaction occurs right let's say tau no reaction occurs and uh, say reaction r1 occurs instantly after tau so at a small time interval after tau let's say d tau reaction r1 occurs right so say there are uh, four molecules of s1 and three molecules of s2 right so 
one of the molecules collide together and form 2s1 right so if there are four of s1 and three of s2 and these two collide this means this will give five of s2 right and two of rather five of s1 and two of s2 right and uh, so forth so we'll find another tau until which reactions the, there's no collision that takes place say tau 2 and say reaction r2 takes place and so forth like until whatever time we are trying to observe we i mean reactions will take place right say until tau n some reaction will take place and that's it so this is how we want to take a look at our simulation so for this we define a reaction probability density function from which uh, we obtain our tau and mu and uh, tau and mu is defined in terms of a joint probability density right and uh, so this particular term means that the probability that a given state that at a given state x1 snow on till xn at time t the next reaction right will occur between t plus tau and t plus tau plus d tau and it will be r mu reaction so r mu can be r1 r2 so on until uh, how many reactions are present in our system and tau represents uh, how long uh, the system will proceed without any reaction right so that's what tau and mu means right so now uh, we define each reaction r mu as a function of h mu now h mu we have already used it over and over uh, in the last few slides but now we are just formalizing the whole thing right so h mu is the number of distinct r mu molecular reactant combinations available in the state so remember for uh, reaction one we said x1 into x2 yeah so that's what it was so as an example let's uh, look at uh, reaction one again so h mu or rather h1 because this is reaction one uh, will be equal to say if x1 equals 100 and x2 equals 200 number of molecules right so x1 into x2 will be 100 into 200 which gives 20,000 way that uh, through which r1 can occur so th there are these many uh, you know uh, reactions that can occur uh, through r1 right and uh, in a similar manner if you look at the irreversible uh, reaction of uh, the second mechanism which is r2 we can see that uh, if uh, there are 100 of x1 and 200 of x2 we can see that the number of distinct reactions will be 4950 so we can see that there are there is more chance of reaction one happening uh, compared to reaction number two and we will be using this over and over again uh, when we will uh, run our code right so um, so right so we'll define a new constant called a mu right uh, which is equal to the product of the number of way a reaction can take place into the uh, stochastic rate constant which we discussed from uh, equation number 5a and uh, if you remember in equation number 5 we did mention that x1 into x2 for uh, into c1 dt will be the rate constant of uh, or rather the rate of the reaction for uh, the reaction number one uh, for the case study that we were looking at so so basically i've been repeating the whole thing over and over but we are just formalizing it in terms of a new constant here so what is this this again the probability that a reaction r mu will occur in the volume v in the infinitesimally small time given state x1 these are all number of molecules okay of uh, species uh, s1 s2 so on sn right at time t and uh, when we have these many distinct m distinct reactions okay and uh, so okay so evidently uh, when we uh, add up all this right so the total this will give us the total probability that any reaction occurs right and uh, what's the probability that no reaction occurs right so uh, let p naught tau dash be the probability that no reaction occurs between uh, t comma t plus tau right 
and uh, this will give us the value of tau right and uh, then at a small interval right tau plus d tau that the probability that uh, no reaction occur is given by this and since we already know that uh, the probability of all reactions occur is the sum of this term we know that the probability that no reaction occurs is this particular term right so we have p naught tau plus d tau is equal to the product of uh, the probability that no reaction occurs in the uh, time uh, d tau before uh, this particular uh, instance right and uh, this is the equation for that and we will see that uh, after we take this term to the other side and so forth we will get a differential equation and when we integrate it we get that uh, the probability that no reaction occurs is given by an exponential function uh, which looks something like this right so it will exponentially decay so there is more probability initially that no reaction occurs but uh, that continues to decrease as time progresses so when we take a look at the reaction probability density function again right we can rewrite uh, the probability density function in terms of the two probabilities p0 and a mu where uh, p0 is the probability that uh, when we are at time t okay let me write time t we are presently at time t and p0 represents the probability that no reaction occurs between t and t plus tau plus tau okay so p0 represents the probability that no reaction occurs between these two points and uh, we multiply it into a mu which represents the probability that uh, a reaction mu it can be r1 r2 etc will take place between t plus tau plus d tau right so we can rewrite it in this form then we can substitute uh, uh, we already know what the value of p0 is from uh, equation number 15 right and when we finally substitute this uh, into uh, our uh, joint probability density function which is the reaction probability density function we see that uh, it takes this form right and uh, where a0 is equal to the sum of uh, all the reactions right a1 a2 so on a1 yeah right a n equals one a n right so uh, this is the basis of uh, kinetic monte carlo well i hope you like this video and in case you are completely confused right now don't be because we'll be looking at a case study in the second part of this video and uh, everything will start making sense when once we start uh, applying our theory into a practical use right so uh, don't forget to uh, like share and subscribe and uh, do follow our instagram page and uh, until then take care bye